Okay, Mega Rob team, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the video today. We're going to be doing an analysis on SHIB. I have never done an analysis on SHIB before in this channel, but we've done plenty of trades on SHIB in the past. It's a very volatile coin, high performing coin. It's had a very significant run up, especially last year in September, October, and it's since been consolidating for an extended period of time. So if you want to find out our targets, our predictions, our stop losses, our entries, all of the above, make sure to stick around to the end of the video. We're going to be giving you all that information today. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. Remember to follow us on Twitter and Telegram, links are in the description. With that being said, we're gonna get straight into it. So the last time we did an analysis on SHIB was all the way down here at this red line. We gave it a signal on our VIP. I'm gonna bring up on the screen here. Our entry point was all the way back at this red line. You know, and since then SHIB went parabolic. It literally went parabolic. It did like nine or 10 X in the course of three weeks from there. And we were very, very lucky. We caught that train early and made huge profits. Of course, that was in our VIP channel. Taking a look at SHIB now, and you know, taking a look at SHIB then, we were in about a 138 day consolidation pattern. All right, I've said before, the longer the consolidation, the more explosive uh, the move. If you think about like a pressure cooker, that's what I think about it. You turn in that pressure up, it's gonna explode, it's gonna pop. And it's kind of what we see when we have consolidations. And moving forward, we're gonna be looking at this consolidation pattern we've had here, which is a symmetrical triangle consolidation. It is quite a broad symmetrical triangle and quite spread out with a huge overextension. And I'm calling this an overextension at the top because we have evidence that we do have these points of retest. So in a symmetrical triangle, what it needs, it needs three points of testing on one side and at least two points of testing on the other side. And we have that on that symmetrical triangle. What we're seeing here is our first wave, bang, 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 bang. And of course, this will be our breakout point here. Okay, guys, keep that in mind. We're going to say it again. This is a symmetrical triangle formation. It's been 130 day long consolidation around about so 125 days. It's a large consolidation. Large consolidations equal large moves. It's very, very simple. All right, so what we're looking at here, we're looking to enter anywhere above this black line here. All right, so this black line on the chart, it's 2748. Entries above 2748. I'm going to put the long on the chart here. And of course, our stop losses will be initially, we're going to have our stop loss underneath that daily close, all right? The previous daily close, which will be around over here, all right? So about a 7% risk, all right? And our, our reward, obviously, our first target is 23%. Our next target, we're going to be putting at the, I think it's the 32.8 the FIB or 32.6 FIB, sorry, uh, which is around 42%. So significant potential here for SHIB. Of course, stop loss under here. If, however, the price pushes up here, gets rejected, of course, comes down, hits that stop loss, we're looking for that re-entry down on this bottom line for a move upwards again. It's very hard to say. We do have a little bit of time left here, guys, in this consolidation pattern. This pattern hasn't quite finished consolidating. Of course, we are still within the pattern, so we can definitely push further along until the end of April. But we are expecting before the end of April for SHIB to have made a significant move. Either we break this support, we crash, all right, and that's going to happen if the market crashes, or we continue upwards and go quite parabolic, of course. That will happen if Bitcoin is able to push past $48,000. So guys, those are the targets. Let's take a look at the technicals. First and foremost, the moving averages, and we are above the 100-day moving average for SHIB. Really nice to see. Only this daily candle, 12 hours to go. We'd like to see that 12-hour candle close above this 100 day moving average. Ideally, if this daily candle closes above the black line, even better, but at least above that moving average. Above the nine moving average, we had a lot of support above that nine day moving average continuing up along this way. And I'm just gonna quickly change, I'm not a huge fan of the green on the pen. Let me change that to what I usually have, which is the orange. Um, there we go. And what we'll do next is we'll bring up our bull market support band. So bull market support band, of course, we found a bit of significant support on here. I'd like to go check it out on the two day and I'd like to check it out on the weekly because the weekly is where we want to be using that bull market support band. And we can see a, a pretty interesting thing here. We can see we're actually pushing up into that bull market support band. And where does that bull market support band end? Well, we're actually going to be converging downwards before we get that breakout point, which will mean if we do in fact break out here, it's a pretty strong buy signal. It's a pretty strong indication that this trend will in fact continue upwards. So if you take anything away from today's video so far, guys, I don't think it's the time to be entering now. I think it's time to be keeping an eye on this and being aware that if this does break upwards here, we are going to be having a parabolic run. 
And taking a look at the um, Gaussian channel, we do see we retested that midline. Really, really nice to see. Of course, we could get some kind of push upwards over here. We have that top line of Gaussian channel pushing down. With that, we'll be tracing the top line of the bull market support band. So acting as a bit of resistance as well. Moving on from here, let's take a look at the RSI. Let's take a look at the uh, MACD. And we'll bring those up in a second. RSI and MACD. And what can we see on the RSI MACD? Well, first and foremost, we can draw our trend line across. And this is an interesting thing here. We see a breakout on the RSI with a retest for support, a support resistance flip. Usually I like to say the RSI kind of shows signs of which way the trend will be heading before the price action catches up. And that is very true. The RSI will usually break out or show breakouts that is not present in the chart until the price catches up later on. So the RSI is, is flashing a nice buy signal and is looking at strong, looking bullish. Moving on to the three day chart, we can see we had that crossover of the nine uh, moving average and we did have a breakout of a horizontal resistance here on the RSI. Or should I say, it looks like we, did we break out? Yep, we just broke out of that horizontal resistance, looking strong again, of course. RSI is indicating uh, the strength is increasing, the momentum is increasing, it is starting to look good, but we do need that price action to break over and close above this major resistance zone before we have that entry. Until then, obviously waiting for an entry down below is another possibility, guys. So if you have any questions for today's video, I hope you enjoyed. I try to keep these nice and short, sharp, and sweet. I hope they provide a little bit of information of what's happening, and I, I just wanna re-emphasize, guys, do not get caught up and I haven't talked a lot about that short-term price action because I don't want you to get caught up on what's happening in the immediate short term. You should be looking for these breakout points here, confirmation of trend before you look at kind of making any dis huge decisions. So when we have a breakout here, we have a conf confirmation that this consolidation pattern has basically concluded and we are initiating a new trend, whether it will be upwards or whether we get rejected and obviously down, more likely to be the case that we head upwards. Vice versa, if we continue down here, break out of this trend line and get rejected, it's confirming that we're heading downwards. And then based on these scenarios, scenario one, number one and scenario number two, you can then make a decision of where you think the price will be heading in terms of placing money into the market. Or you can make a decision of how much money do you think you should be placing into uh, this trade? Trying to predict that right now and trying to say, you know, I'm gonna buy now because Mega Whale said it could go up. It's kind of stupid. Wait for confirmation. We're giving you these confirmation points. Utilize this information and trade smart. You're not a gambler. Don't gamble if you're hard worked, hard earned money, whatever it is. Uh, don't throw it away for no reason, guys. Wait for confirmation, then enter. It doesn't matter if it goes up 5% from here and then you enter 5% higher, it is better to enter 5% higher when it's a safe, if it's a safe entry than to enter on a 5% on a, you know, on a, on a dip when it's a huge risk, all right? Keep that in mind. Safe entries will always be favorable to risky entries, even if you make less money on a safe entry.